Hi, friends. I'm Emily Lay, and you're listening to The Simplified Podcast. If you need a few minutes to filter out the noise and the hustle, this is it. You're in the right place. Every week, I invite you to slow down and explore how to organize and automate the complicated parts of life so you can focus on what truly matters most. If you're a fan of the Simplified Podcast, then I bet you'd love to be part of our Simplified newsletter community. When you join, you will automatically receive our free Simplicity Challenge ebook. Plus, you'll also be notified first when we launch a new product, get something back in stock, or when your favorites go on sale. On top of that, you'll also get a Simplified Post email on the first of every month with links and freebies galore. You can join all the fun at emilylay.co slash newsletter. Guys, there are only three things you can count on in this world. Death, taxes, and that someone will ask you what's for dinner at least once a day. We have spent a few episodes on this podcast talking about how life-changing it can be to make meal planning and meal prepping part of your week. There's no denying it. But there are some weeks when life just happens and your best laid plans will go awry. A project slips in, a kid gets sick, a practice runs long. You have to bend and flex to make it all happen, including feeding yourself and your people. If you need to get a healthy dinner on the table in a hurry, I've got you. We're going to keep this episode short and sweet today because when dinner's on the line, who has time to linger? Not me. I have four recipes that are easy, healthy, and perfect to make for a weeknight dinner because they use two of my favorite kitchen appliances in the world. I'm being serious here. I even rearranged my pantry so that these are like at eye level where I can just pull them right out. The slow cooker and the instant pot. Can I get an amen? Slow cookers have been a saving grace of busy people for a long time, but now busy people also have the Instant Pot. I know tons of you love your Instant Pot, and I do too, but if you just got one over the holidays and you're not sure what the Instant Pot is, don't even sweat it. The Instant Pot is just a pressure cooker that's super easy to use, and it makes your favorite soups and rice and beans in just a fraction of the time. So I'm going to walk you through how to make each of these recipes step by step. But if you're out for a walk or busy doing something else at the moment, don't worry about it. I'll have links to each of these recipes at the show notes page for this episode. And that is at emilylay.com slash podcast. All right, here we go. Here are four easy, healthy weeknight meals that you need to add to your family favorites recipe binder or your go-to meals list. You can even make tonight in your Instant Pot or slow cooker. Recipe number one, slow cooker chicken taco soup. Do you know what the best kind of weeknight meal is? It's one where you don't have to chop anything. So says me. Listen, I love this chicken taco soup recipe because literally all you have to do is dump the contents of a few cans and a few spices into the pot and that's it. Plus, it is really, really good, and you can dress it up in a lot of different ways. So I found this recipe on a blog called Together is Family, and do you want to hear how hard this recipe is? Here we go. Grab one small can of black beans, one small can of pinto beans, one small can of corn. And when I say small, I mean like regular size. Pop the lids off, drain the contents into a colander. You can just do it all at the same time, or you can do it one by one, or you can just drain them right from the can. I won't judge. I rinse these things. You don't have to. You can just drain the liquid, and then you put it all in the pot. Then you pour in a 10-ounce can of green enchilada sauce, a 14-ounce can of diced tomatoes, and a 14-ounce can of chicken broth. At this point, we are in all cans mode. After that, add the spices. Half a teaspoon of cumin, half a teaspoon of chili powder, half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Then you dump in a packet of taco seasoning. One of the best is the taco seasoning packet that comes from Siete. It's really flavorful, plus it's all organic and it doesn't have any weird stuff in it. Then you give the whole pot a big stir, taste it just to see if the soup needs a little salt and pepper. If it does, just you do you. You add it to your taste. After that, it's time to add the chicken. So Jessica, the blogger at Together is Family, uses a 12-ounce can of Kirkland canned chicken breast from Costco. This is very delicious in a pinch. But if I've got the time, I like to use fresh chicken breasts or thighs, which I think have a little more flavor in this soup. You can dice them up if you want. I don't. I just put them in whole, and then you just shred them later in the soup when they're cooked. Just shred them with like two forks. It's very easy. That is all the prep for this recipe, and now it's time to get cooking. 
And seriously, like as I'm recording this podcast, I think I'm going to make this tonight in the Instant Pot because it is so good. Now, if you're using the canned chicken breast, your job is easy. You just heat the soup until it's hot. If you're adding in fresh chicken breasts or thighs, you're going to cook the soup on low for five to six hours or on high for two hours. And after that, you're good to go. Okay, so by the way, P.S., if you want to cook the chicken quickly, you can use your Instant Pot to make the soup. You just turn your Instant Pot to 10 minutes on the poultry setting, and you'll be eating soup in no time, and your chicken, just make sure it's 165, but usually 10 minutes will always get it there for me. When the soup is ready, you can serve it with any fixings. You can serve it with no fixings. It's good just as is, but we love things like tortilla chips or Fritos, maybe some cheese, sour cream, avocado, cilantro. It's really easy to like dress it up however you want. I love to make this soup and then kind of set out all the toppings. And then our family who likes, you know, everyone likes a different topping. They can kind of make it themselves and it makes it just like a little more fun. You have a little soup bar going and that's always a nice little treat for a weeknight meal. Now, recipe number two. You guys, if you are out on a walk, don't worry. I will put the link to this in the show notes. But this is a like once a week to once like an every other week type of a meal at our house. This recipe actually was introduced to me by Kristen Winchester, who we have on the on the podcast here a lot. She made it for the twins and I when we were visiting her in North Carolina over the summer. I'm not exaggerating when I say this soup is life-changing, especially when it's cold outside, but really we eat it all year long. Who am I kidding? It's equal parts hearty and refreshing. So I have the blogger Brie McCoy over at Our Savory Life to thank for this one. So here's how you make it. Chop an onion, a couple carrots, and one to two pounds of potatoes. So, okay, you can chop your potatoes on this, but I just get the golden potatoes in the bag at the grocery store, give them a good rinse, chop them into quarters or halves, depending on how big you want them, and you're really good to go. And here's a tip. If you get those little butter potatoes, those golden ones, you don't even have to peel them. So I'm just saying, like, makes my life easier. Once your veggies are chopped, turn your Instant Pot onto the saute function and pour in about two tablespoons of olive oil. I never measure this. I just throw it all in. Heat the oil until the pot says hot, and then you're going to pour in the onions, carrots, and potatoes. Saute those until they're softish, about three minutes. Make sure you stir it a couple times. Then you pour in a tablespoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper. Now, That might sound like a lot of salt to you, but we're trying to season a whole pot of soup, and that includes a bunch of potatoes, so it will work out, I promise. Meanwhile, you are going to chop up a few cloves of garlic, or if you want to cheat like I do, you can just buy the minced garlic in a jar, and it lasts for a really long time. And a half a teaspoon equals one clove of garlic, and so I just throw a couple of those in there. Then teaspoon of oregano, teaspoon of dried Italian seasoning, Throw that in the pot, saute for about a minute, just get it all worked in there. You got to keep stirring this, by the way, because the garlic will burn. After about a minute, pour in about a quart of chicken stock. This is like if you buy like the container of chicken stock, not the can, but the container, it's about four cups. You're going to pour all the, all of that in there. Make sure you scrape the bottom of the pot while you pour. You get some of that good stuff, the brown bits into the stock. That's going to make your soup really flavorful. Then this is going to blow your mind. You open a pack of boneless, skinless chicken thighs or chicken breasts. I just do one packet, right? So it's like a pound. You can, you can do up to two pounds. I just throw one packet in there and it's good enough for our family. Drop them in their hole. You don't even have to chop it up. Like that's one of the most beautiful things about this recipe. After that, Make sure your Instant Pot lid is turned to sealing. Then press the off button, which turns off saute. Then you can hit the poultry button. I just hit the manual button. And you put the soup on for 10 minutes. If your chicken is frozen, I don't do mine frozen, but if your chicken is frozen, add one to two minutes and it still cooks all the way through and you'll be totally fine. Then step away and let the Instant Pot do its thing. It won't take long. Like many of you, I was a little scared to use an Instant Pot at first because the pressure cooker is like, whoa. But it will change your life. I'm not kidding. It is amazing how fast you can make things in the Instant Pot and they will be delicious like you worked over a stove for a very long time. After your Instant Pot beeps to tell you it's done, let the pressure release naturally. This takes like five to 10 minutes. Then release the steam. When you open the lid, you can take two forks and shred the chicken right there in the soup 
Or I will tend to take it out and just kind of shred it up and then put it back in. It's totally up to you. Then when you put the chicken back in the pot, this is the magic part, okay? This is where it becomes like it goes from soup to amazing. You stir in a quarter cup of lemon juice. That is about one fresh lemon. By the way, I don't use a lemon. I just use lemon juice you get at the store in the container. After that, you make sure your soup is ready for the extra deliciousness. And here's where it comes in. It is a creamy element. You add a quarter cup of either cream cheese or mascarpone cheese. I use mascarpone. I keep it in my fridge at all times because we make this soup so often. And add a quarter cup of that. You could even use a half a cup of heavy cream. Whatever you have, use it. But I, I'm telling you, the mascarpone is the the magic sauce here. Taste your soup. See if it needs more lemon or cream or salt and pepper, whatever. I don't actually ever add anything at this point. It's usually just perfect right there. But do that and then tell me this is not one of the most delicious things you've ever made in your life. It will freeze really well. It reheats beautifully, especially on the stove. If you prefer the slow cooker, you're in luck. You can make this soup in there too. You just cook the veggies in a skillet for a few minutes on medium high-ish. Then transfer to your slow cooker and follow all the same directions. Cook on low five to six hours or high two to three. Seriously, make it. Tag me. You will thank me and Kristen and Brie. This is Brie's recipe, but Kristen and I make it all the time. It is so good. All right, moving on. Recipe number three, Instant Pot Carnitas. The best cook on our team at Simplified, hands down, is Dusty. I'm sorry, everybody else, but it's Dusty. (laughs) She is our resident keto queen, and we are constantly asking her how to use up our leftover chicken breasts. If I had a dollar for every time I text Dusty and said, Dusty, I've got this chicken. What do I do with it? I would be very wealthy. Dusty swears by this Instant Pot Carnitas recipe, and she wanted me to tell you not to skimp on the lime here. So if you're new to carnitas, I think you're going to love this. Carnitas are pulled pork slowly simmered in a flavorful citrus sauce, and they are so good on like a hundred different things, tacos, taco bowls, salad, whatever. You could even cook in an egg. You can cook an egg and throw it on top of some carnitas and call it breakfast if you want. Dusty loves this recipe from a blog called Nom Nom, and here is what you do for this one. Get a pork shoulder that's about two pounds, cut it into two large, no, not two, I'm sorry, I'm going to back that up. You cut it into large two-inch cubes. And this, my friends, is why it's important to read a recipe all the way through before you start cooking, because you might have cut it into two pieces instead of lots of two-inch cubes. So pat the cubes dry with a paper towel and season them all over with salt and pepper. Then you're going to set those aside, grab your Instant Pot, and turn on the saute function. Let it get really like nice and hot. After that, toss those pork cubes into the Instant Pot. Fill the bottom of the pot with about one layer of pork so that each cube is touching the bottom in some way. You want to brown these little puppies all over from three to five minutes, which means you may have to do this in batches, which is fine. Don't I I will avoid a recipe if it says I have to do batches of anything, but with the Instant Pot, it goes so quickly. It's just, it's not, don't let it deter you. They have to do it in batches. You only want to brown them in batches though, because if you do it with everything like all in there together, it'll be overcrowded. It won't get brown. So when all the meat is brown, put all the pork cubes back into the Instant Pot and press the cancel button. This turns off saute. Then we're going to dump a whole bunch of stuff in the pot to make these carnitas delicious. Here we go. One cup of water, the juice from one orange. By the way, you can even toss the orange rind in for extra flavor. Then throw in the juice of two limes and one diced jalapeno. A word to the wise about jalapenos. If you put the seeds in, it's hot. If you don't, it's not as hot. So just act accordingly. Now we're going to add a bunch of spices to get ready. And remember that this recipe is at emilylay.com slash podcast, so don't panic. You will need to add two teaspoons of kosher salt or one teaspoon of regular table salt. Three minced cloves of garlic, one teaspoon paprika, one teaspoon dried parsley, a half teaspoon of black pepper, half teaspoon of ground cumin. Get a spoon, stir it all up, get everything like distributed, you know? Put the lid on, press cancel, and then press the meat button so that the cook time can be set to 30 minutes. When the Instant Pot beeps to tell you it's all finished, let the pressure release naturally for about 20 minutes. Make sure you do this. Then take off the lime and shred the meat with two forks. Again, you can do this in the Instant Pot bowl, or you can put it on a plate. 
or cutting board, whatever works for you. And here's the kicker. These carnitas will be great if you serve them just like this, but they are magic if they're a little crispy. So if crispy is your thing, it is my thing. You could take some of the meat and put it on a hot skillet for a couple minutes, no oil necessary. If you don't want to mess with the skillet, don't want to wash another dish, you could even put some meat under the broiler in the oven for a couple minutes. And here's the trick my mom taught me. If you use the nonstick aluminum foil, you don't even have to clean a pan. So broiler, just make sure you watch it so you don't burn it or catch it on fire. I'm telling you, though, that the crispiness is what makes carnitas magical. So crispy or not, after you make this recipe, you will have so much delicious meat for tacos, burrito bowls, or whatever else your heart can think of. Okay, and if you don't have an Instant Pot, don't worry. You can put all the ingredients except for that one cup of water in your slow cooker and cook it on low for six hours. That is another option. Okay, Recipe number four, last but not least, this is a family favorite recipe of the Lay's, but also the Cowan's. My maiden name is Cowan. This is the slow cooker Coca-Cola pot roast. Okay. I don't know how traditionally healthy this recipe is, but it's good for my soul, so we're going to go with it. It's a great thing to put in the crock pot in the morning and let cook all day or put in the Instant Pot after work and let it do its thing. So here's what you do for this one, and this one's super easy. I can actually recite this like totally from memory because I make it so often. Get the slow cooker, toss in a beef chuck roast, whatever size you want. There's no need to cube it, just the whole thing. Just put it in there. Make sure it is thawed. I tried to do this frozen one time, and this was it did not turn out well. Put it in there thawed. Then grab a handful or two of baby carrots, dice up a couple of red potatoes, or you can use my favorite little golden butter potatoes, throw them in there. Then you're going to dice up an onion. I do these kind of big and rough, like I don't really pay a whole lot of attention, just cut them up. Grab a can of Coke, yes, a can of Coca-Cola, a packet of onion soup mix and put it in the pot. Stir it all together, put on the lid, cook it on low for six to eight hours or high for three to four. That's it. If you want to use your Instant Pot to make this, put in the same ingredients and add a cup of water. Then turn on the meat function for 45 minutes and let the pressure release naturally for about 20. You guys, I love this recipe so much. This is one of the first things I ever cooked for our little family when Brady was just a little guy. He loved it way back then and he still does now. My favorite part about this is that you have your veggies in there like with your meat. So you're cooking a whole meal all at one time. I will often make this and then take the leftovers and put them aside, put them in the fridge for the next day, and then get Hawaiian rolls or whatever kind of rolls you have and make little uh, sandwiches. And they're so good that way. So there you go, you guys, four easy, pretty, pretty healthy recipes that you can put in front of your people on a weeknight, all with very, very, very minimal effort. If you would like to see me write a simplified cookbook, from someone who does not necessarily enjoy cooking but has to feed people, please share this episode so that I can tell everyone that we need to do that because it is a bucket list item for me. Believe it or not, it is going to be like the cookbook for people who don't really enjoy cooking and want to do it really quickly but also want it to taste good and want it to be healthy and want everyone to praise her for how good her cooking is. That's the working title. And next, I have a little benediction. Yes, I have a benediction. Just some words that I would like to pray over you, say over you as you go about your day. You might be unloading the dishwasher right now or taking a walk around your neighborhood, but just as long as you're not driving, close your eyes, take a little breath, and let these words wash over you as you go about your day. I hope you're recognized for the hero that you are the one who puts dinner on the table every night, no matter where it came from or who made it. In the middle of a busy week, I hope you get to spend some time at the table with the people you love the most. And I hope you find a bit of peace in those moments. As always, I love to leave you guys with a little tip to help you put all the things we talked about today into practice. If you are ever making a chicken recipe for the Instant Pot or slow cooker, I highly recommend using chicken thighs. Not only are they cheaper, but they're so much more forgiving when it comes to cook time. They don't dry out like chicken breasts will. Even if you're not a dark meat girl, try using them in soups and stews. You will be surprised by how much you like them and all the flavor that they bring. 
Well, thank you guys for listening to this episode of the Simplified Podcast. I hope today's episode gave you guys some more ideas and more recipes that you can pull out of your back pocket on a busy weeknight. I wasn't kidding when I said I want to write a cookbook one day. So if you guys just want to go like retweet, share, comment, post, like review this episode, that would be great because I think we could all use a cookbook from the girl who does not really enjoy cooking but also wants things to taste good and wants trophies for the meals she makes. These four are surefire winners, by the way. So you can find show notes for this episode, including the recipes for all the things we talked about at emilylay.com slash podcast, where you can check out links and resources I mentioned here. And you can shop the simplified brand of planners and products. Plus, for more simplicity tips, you can find me on Instagram at emilylay and at simplified. If you are loving this show as much as I am, I bet you might like my latest book. It is called Growing Boldly, Dare to Build a Life You Love. And you can find it in stores right now, wherever you buy books. Until next time, thank you guys so much for listening. Bye.